Geordie LaForge from Star Trek The Next Generation was born without eyesight, but thanks to Starfleet medical science, he was able to see even better than those with normal human vision using his signature visor, which stood for Visual Instrument and Sensory Organ Replacement. Geordie received his first visor shortly after turning five. It basically gave him superhuman abilities as he could see things that would be invisible for others, but the device wasn't without its issues. Throughout his Starfleet career, it caused Geordie a fair amount of trouble and made the job a lot harder for LeVar. Burton, who had to play the character with his eyes almost completely covered. The visor has also become greatly iconic in pop culture, and has inspired a lot of real-world creations. But there are plenty of facts about Geordie's visor that fans may have missed or forgotten over the years. Remember, the visor was so much more than just a fashion statement. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with Trek Culture here with 10 things you didn't know about Geordie's visor. Number 10. What Geordie Can See The colours that humans see are actually just different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation, with red being the longest and violet the shortest. However, visual light is only a small segment of the electromagnetic spectrum. Longer wavelengths contain types of radiation like infrared light, microwaves and radio waves, and shorter wavelengths contain types like ultraviolet light, x-rays and gamma rays. With his visor, Geordie was able to see much more of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning he could detect heat by looking at infrared light and sometimes see through objects or clouds that would appear opaque for anyone else. He also saw the world in much more detail than the average person. He could detect tiny details in people's heart rates and perspiration, which sometimes even allowed him to tell if someone was lying. There have been several scenes that have given us representations of Geordie's way of seeing, but with ordinary human eyes, it's actually physically impossible to even comprehend what it would be like to see anything other than visible light. Number 9. How it affected LeVar Burton's acting in an interview with the Television Academy Foundation, LeVar Burton discussed the difficulty of playing a character who was supposed to have such enhanced vision, while in reality he had about 85% of his view completely blocked off by the visor. Apparently at the beginning of The Next Generation, Burton was constantly knocking into things, able only to see what was directly in front of him. Over time, he got better by learning new ways to navigate the sets with the visor on, like using light stands and other points of reference that stood out. Burton was nearly completely blinded during filming, which made his job a lot harder. Beyond that, with a large part of his face covered, Burton also had to try way harder to convey emotion with just his mouth and body language. Despite all of these limitations though, Burton was able to pull the whole thing off brilliantly for seven whole seasons before Geordie finally got his upgrade after Star Trek Generations. Number 8. Why Geordie Stopped Using His Visor We first saw Geordie's ocular implants in the Next Generation finale, All Good Things. After the timeline was changed in that episode, he ended up getting this new tech shortly after Star Trek Generations, but they were actually invented far earlier. In the episode Loud as a Whisper, Dr. Pulaski revealed that she had actually done several surgeries to install these kinds of implants and offered to replace Geordie's visor with them. Geordie decided not to go through with the procedure because he believed that the technology of ocular implants was not yet on the same level as the visor. He would have basically been sacrificing visual range for a bit of added comfort and a more natural look. But apparently, by the time of first contact, either those devices had advanced far enough or Geordie simply decided that aesthetics and comfort were more important to him, though the ocular implant still did cause him headaches from time to time. Of course, LeVar Burton often argued to have his visor replaced with something more natural, but it wasn't until after The Next Generation ended that he finally got what he wanted. Number 7. Why Geordie Declined Treatment Geordie's visor actually caused him a lot of discomfort. He would often get headaches and become overwhelmed by all of the information his brain was receiving. The data from the sensors was transmitted into the brain through short pulses, rather than all at once, which made it a bit easier to process, but he still experienced constant pain in his day-to-day -day life. In Encounter at Farpoint, Dr. Crusher offered to either give him painkillers or a surgery to numb the affected parts of his brain, but he declined both options because he believed that they would cause the visor to be less effective. Keeping the visor at peak performance was really important to Geordie. He used his advanced sight in his engineering work constantly. Hopefully, Geordie will have found an effective way to treat these symptoms when we see him in the third season of Star Trek Picard, though. Number 6. Other Visors in Star Trek 
Geordi wasn't the only character in Star Trek history with a visor, nor was he actually the first. In fact, in the Discovery episode Brothers, we saw a Starfleet officer from about 100 years before The Next Generation wearing an earlier model of the same device. This retro visor looked much bulkier and wrapped around the entire head instead of just the eyes, probably to more easily reach different parts of the brain. We also saw two officers with visors in the Lower Decks episode Second Contact. The first could be seen when Tendi went aboard the shuttlecraft on the Cerritos, and the second appeared as a member of the landing party visiting the Galadonians. Later, we got a visor wearing teddy bear in the episode Cupid's Errant Arrow as well. Ocular implants were probably a more common technology than visors because they worked as well as normal eyes and felt far more natural. But for those who wanted a bit of an upgrade, a visor was the way to go. Number 5. Rihanna's Visor in 2016, Rihanna developed a new line of sunglasses in collaboration with Dior, which the pop star said were directly inspired by Geordie's unique style. I've always been obsessed with his eyewear, Rihanna said while explaining her design process. She continued, and when I got to Dior and saw all the materials I could play with, it all just came together. It didn't take long for Rihanna's drawings to be translated into a physical prototype, and the line was released later that year in June. While her sunglasses are definitely more fashion-focused than Geordie's visor, you can kind of see the similarities if you really squint. The connected lenses are really the best giveaway. Rihanna's always been a big Star Trek fan, something she's mentioned in the past. She even made a song and music video called Sledgehammer to promote Star Trek Beyond. It's actually really nice to see her get the opportunities to just nerd out about Star Trek to her fans. Number 4. Geordie almost gave the visor up for love. We first saw Ensign Sonia Gomez in the Next Generation episode Q Who, when she accidentally spilled her drink on Captain Picard. As she later appeared in the episode Samaritan Snare, then years later in the Lower Decks episode First First Contact as a captain. However, her role in the show was originally planned to be much bigger. The writers had plans to make Gomez into a new love interest for La Forge. They wanted a reason to have Geordi undergo a dangerous surgery to replace his visor with something more natural, so the idea was that the two would start to get closer, eventually leading to a romance, and Geordi would decide to go through with the surgery in order to see her beauty through human eyes. The writers soon decided decided that Geordie and Sonia were not meant to be, likely because they gave the actors no indication that the characters were supposed to be into each other. And so Geordie never had a reason to risk his life to see naturally. Number 3. Visor Live Video Feeds Visors could actually be linked to a computer, which could generate a live video feed of the device's point of view onto a screen. Now, this may seem like a cool ability to have for the Enterprise crew, but it was actually a major security issue. In Star Trek Generations and the episode The Mind's Eye, which we'll talk about again in a moment, Geordi was captured and unknowingly had his visor linked to his captor's computers. This allowed the Klingons to learn the Enterprise's shield modulation in Generations and helped the Romulans monitor Geordi in The Mind's Eye. Some fans even think Theorize that these two events are actually what inspired Geordie to switch to ocular implants after generations, as they had no external interfaces which could be used to hack them like the visor. Having someone else spy on him through his own eyes on two occasions has got to be pretty traumatic. Number 2. The Mind Control Powers of the Visor Geordie LaForge was captured by Romulans while on vacation in the episode The Mind's Eye. Using the visor's interface with Geordie's brain, they were able to force him to see horrible images and eventually conditioned his mind to follow their orders. Using this mind control method, the Romulans hoped to get Geordie to assassinate a Klingon named Varg in order to spark conflict between the Klingon Empire and the Federation, which they nearly succeeded at. Luckily, Data began detecting strange E-band emissions aboard the ship and was able to figure out that they were being used to interface with the visor. It was later discovered that Kel, one of the Klingons visiting the Enterprise, was actually a Romulan conspirator who was feeding Geordie commands through E-bands. It's truly terrifying to know that the same technology that allowed Geordie to see could also be used to command his brain. Number 1. Real Life Visors We don't have anything as advanced as Geordie's visor in the present, but we're getting closer every day. We already have devices that can see far further than us and detect parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can't see with our eyes. Add that with the fact that technology that interfaces with your brain has been getting way more advanced recently, and it seems like it may not be that long before technology becomes real. Funnily enough, there actually was a real vision-aiding device released in the late 90s that was called Geordie for Joint Optical Reflective Display in honour of Geordie LaForge. The Geordie device was based on NASA tech and used cameras to allow people 
people with limited vision to see further. It even had a zoom function, but it wasn't directly linked into the brain and only worked if the person had some level of sight in their eyes. But still, it's interesting to see Star Trek inspiring real-life innovation, even if it may be a while before we can see anything like the visor. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed something, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there and also on Instagram as well. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Trek Culture. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember to boldly go where no one has gone before.